Well, um, then I'll read it. And I'll just say, before I do so, what I always say in America, I know that um, I'm talking to you in England, but uh, in America we say that a skip is a, a, a dumpster. The skip. I, I took my life and threw it on the skip, reckoning the next door neighbors wouldn't mind if my life hitched the lift to the council tip with their dry rot and rubble. What you find with skips is the whole community joins in. Old mattresses appear. Doors kind of drift along with all that won't fit in the bin and stuff the binmen can't be fished to shift. I threw away my life and there it lay and grew quite sodden. What a dreadful shame, clucked some old bag and sucked her teeth. The way the young these days, no values, me, I blame. But I blamed no one. Quality control had loused it up, and that was that. Enough said. I couldn't stick at home. I took a stroll and passed the skip and left my life for dead. Without my life, the beer was just as foul, the landlord still as filthy as his wife, the chicken in the basket was an owl, and no one said, he, Jim lad, worth the life. Well, I got back that night, the worse for wear, but still just capable of single vision. Looked in the skip, <coughs> my life, it wasn't there. Some bugger nicked it without my permission. Okay, so I got angry and began to shout and woke the street. Okay, okay. And I was sick all down the neighbor's van. And I disgraced myself on the parquet. And then, you know how, if you've had a few, you awake at dawn all healthy like sea breezes, raring to go and thinking, clever you, you got away with it. And then, oh Jesus, it hits you. Well, that morning... Just at six, I woke, got up, and looked down at the skip. There lay my life, still sodden on the bricks. There lay my poor old life, arse over tip. Or was it mine? Still dressed, I went downstairs and took a long, cool look. The truth was dawning. Someone had just exchanged my life for theirs. Poor fool, I thought. I should have left a warning. Some bastard saw my life and thought it nicer than what he'd had. Yet what he'd had seemed fine. He never caught his fingers in the slicer the way I'd managed with that life of mine. His life lay glistening in the rain, <coughs> neglected, but still a decent and authentic life. Some people I can think of, I reflected, <coughs> would take that thing as soon as you'd say knife. It seemed a shame to miss a chance like that. I brought the life in, dried it by the stove. It looked so fetching, stretched out on the mat. I tried it on. It fitted like a glove. And now, when some local bat drops off the twig, and new folk take the house and pull up floors and knock down walls and hire some kind of big container, say, a skip for their old doors. <coughs> I'll watch it like a hawk, and every day I'll make at least, oh, half a dozen trips. I've furnished an existence in that way. You'd not believe the things you find on skips. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, James Fenton. The wonderful James Fenton. Thank you very much, James. Thank you.